Friends, good morning and welcome to worship <clears throat> on this All Saints Sunday when we remember and give thanks for those saints in our lives who have died and give thanks for the saints who walk alongside us every day of our lives. We weep, we remember, and then we rejoice in what God has done for us in Christ Jesus. This is the day that the Lord has made, so we will rejoice and be glad in it. Um, our <clears throat> uh, keyboardist is not here um, today, um, so praying that everything is all right. I've called him, so if he comes, we'll start singing, but if not, we're just going to do a spoken service today, um, and it will all be okay. Um, we will, however, um, probably maybe speak a few pieces of the liturgy, so if uh, we decide to do that, I will let you know. Today is the first Sunday of the month, so we have um, November birthdays. So who has a November birthday who's here? Miss Diane, when is your birthday? Martin Luther. Martin Luther, so is that the 4th, the 10th? There you go, Martin Luther's birthday and Diane Abel's birthday. <laughs> And then it's also Pat Hupman's birthday today, so I imagine they will be coming in. <laughs> They're not here yet, but hopefully they will be here. Um, but because of birthdays and rejoicing, uh, I have some really bad birthday jokes for you. So what kind of music is scary for birthday balloons? Pop music. <laughs> and did you hear about the birthday candle sale? It was a huge blowout. <clears throat> there you go. Man, I'm getting better at this. Or, or you really are taking heed to the, you know, you are the stole now. You have to laugh. <laughs> Friends, I'm grateful you are here. Yes, Steve. For those of you that weren't here last week, we had a, a very successful consecration Sunday. And if, you're, if you weren't here and are interested in filling out an estimate of giving card, Perfect. Yes, last week was a huge success, and I'll talk more about that at the offering time. Um, but yes, if you need an uh, estimate of giving card for those at home who are watching and you would like to uh, tell us what your estimate of giving will be for the next year, feel free to email me or Steve Bird, and we'll happily uh, receive that estimate from you. Friends, I just want us to take a moment now uh, to silence our hearts and our minds as we prepare for worship. I invite you to stand as you are able. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you, and worthily magnify your holy name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, Amen. Now let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name, amen.
In the mercy of Almighty God, Jesus Christ was given to die for us. And for his sake, God forgives us all our sins. As a called and ordained minister of the Church of Christ and by his authority, I therefore declare to you the entire forgiveness of all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Friends, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Let us pray the prayer of the day together. Almighty God, you have knit your people together in one communion and the mystical body of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Grant us grace to follow your blessed saints in lives of faith and commitment and to know the inexpressible joys you have prepared for those who love you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated as we hear God's word. A reading from Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wines strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away all the tears from all faces, and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Let us read Psalm 24 responsibly. The earth is the Lord's and all that is in it, the world and those who dwell therein. For the Lord has founded it upon the seas and established it upon the rivers. Who may ascend the mountain of the Lord and who may stand in God's holy place? Those of innocent hands and purity of heart, who do not swear on God's being, nor do they pledge by what is false. They shall receive blessing from the Lord, and righteousness from the God of their salvation. Such is the generation of those who seek you, O Lord, of those who seek your face, O God of Jacob. Lift up your heads, O gates. And be lifted up, O everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty, the Lord, mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O gates, and be lifted up, O everlasting doors, that the King of glory may come in. Who is the King of glory? Truly, the Lord of hosts is the King of glory. Now a reading from Revelation. I saw a new heaven and a new earth, for the first heaven and the first earth had passed away, and the sea was no more. And I saw the holy city, the new Jerusalem, coming down out of heaven from God, prepared as a bride adorned for her husband. And I heard a loud voice from the throne saying, See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples, and God himself will be with them. He will wipe every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more, for the first things have passed away. And the one who was seated on the throne said, See, I am making all things new. Also, he said, Write this, for these words are trustworthy and true. Then he said to me, It is done. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the beginning and the end. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
for all the saints who from their labors rest, who thee by faith before the world confessed. Thy name, O Jesus, be forever blessed. Alleluia. Alleluia. From earth's wide bounds, from ocean's farthest coast, through gates of pearl streams in the countless host, singing to Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Alleluia. Alleluia. Friends, the Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 11th chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. When Mary came where Jesus was and saw him, she knelt at his feet and said to him, Lord, if you had been here, my brother would not have died. When Jesus saw her weeping and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, where have you laid him? They said to him, Lord, come and see. Jesus began to weep. So the Jews said, see how he loved him. But some of them said, could not he who opened the eyes of the blind men have kept this man from dying? Then Jesus, again greatly disturbed, came to the tomb. It was a cave and a stone was lying against it. Jesus said, take away the stone. Martha, the sister of the dead man, said to him, Lord, already there is a stench because he has been dead for four days. And Jesus said to her, Did I not tell you that if you believed you would see the glory of God? So they took away the stone. And Jesus looked upward and said, Father, I thank you for having heard me. I knew that you always hear me, but I have said this for the sake of the crowd standing here, so that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, he cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come out. The dead man came out, his hands and feet bound with strips of cloth, and his face wrapped in a cloth. And Jesus said to them, Unbind him and let him go. Friends, this is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace to you and peace from God the Father through the crucified and risen Lord Jesus Christ by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The great Jewish philosopher Abraham Joshua Heschel once said, Much of what the Bible demands can be comprised in one word. Remember. And if we actually stop and think about it, it makes sense. We often hear Moses and the prophets and in the Psalms that they talk about the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which invokes the steadfastness of God's character and love throughout all the generations from the beginning of creation. And Deuteronomy 6, which we read last week and contains the famous prayer, Hear, O Israel, the Lord. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and might. God commands the Israelites to remember this prayer, where they have come from, the story of their freedom, that they once were slaves in, in Egypt, and, their, and the Lord their God brought them out of bondage. To us, recollection is a holy act, Rabbi Heschel writes, we sanctify the present by remembering the past. To us Jews, the essence of faith is memory. To believe is to remember. Friends, that is the spirit we have on All Saints Sunday. When we stop to pause and remember... To believe. We remember the saints in our lives that have died, not just this past year, but the saints who have shaped us throughout our entire lives. 
we remember the saints of this church who have died since last All Saints Day. And we also remember all the saints that formed this church and now live in the church triumphant. Yes, we give thanks for what these amazing people have done in our lives, how they strengthened Christ's church and gave us valuable support and love. But we also must remember to give thanks to God who gave these people to us. We we must remember that all good things come from God, the giver of life. We must remember that there hasn't been a day that has gone by that God wasn't right there next to you. We must remember that God not only knows our names, but knows a number of hairs on our heads. Pastor Zach, that's a lot of we must, isn't it? Because if we're honest with ourselves, it's hard to remember especially when some of us can hardly remember what we ate yesterday and what happened last Thursday. But when times get tough, when our bodies fail us, when the only luck we can catch is bad, when the valley of the shadows darkens and grows longer, whether it be for us or for our loved ones, it's hard to remember. It can be easy to forget who God has promised to be. And I think that's why Rabbi Heschel, in explaining the Jewish faith, wraps together belief, faith, and command with remembering. Because it's a journey of life filled with all the good and all the bad. When Mary and Martha's brother Lazarus was ill and died, they were rightfully distraught, their lives shattered. They reached out to Jesus, and he didn't show for a whole two days later. And their brother died. And the sisters blamed Jesus, if you would have been there, Lord. Tears filled their eyes along with the gathered mourners. And John makes sure that we know what Jesus was also feeling. He was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. The finality of death palpable. The result? Jesus weeps. Real tears flow from his eyes. Because you know what? Jesus gets it. Jesus gets it, so he weeps. And with the evidence of obvious crying, you know, those puffy cheeks and those red eyes, Jesus asks, where have you laid him? As Mary, Martha, and the crowd take Jesus to Lazarus' tomb, the stench of Lazarus' body becomes more fragrant. Reality sets in. And after Martha balks with Jesus a little bit, Jesus says, Did I not tell you that if you believed, you would see the glory of God? Jesus didn't tell Martha to believe harder. He simply tells her to remember. To remember what he had said earlier. This illness does not lead to death. Rather, it is for God's glory so that the Son of God may be glorified through it. Jesus is urging us along with the sisters to remember the promise of future glory, to remember the promise of resurrection. And then Jesus grants to Lazarus 
what only God can grant. Unbind him and let him go. Yet even in the midst of that good news, Jesus wept. Even though he knew what was going to happen, Jesus wept despite knowing the promise of God's glory. Emotions are real. And emotions are valid, especially when they're yours. In Isaiah, the emotions are most certainly real. Because Isaiah has prophesied about a time where there will be sadness and weeping. But through those times, joy will reign. Isaiah talks about the mountain of the Lord that will be made for all people. There will be a feast. And on this mountain, God will have God's way with death. God will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces. It's this God who will give the people faith to remember God's ways. It will be said on that day, Lo, this is our God. We have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord in whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in not ours, but his salvation. This great love from God permits God's people to remember. To remember who God is and what God is all about. Life. We remember that God doesn't neglect his people. God doesn't abandon us or forsake us. See, the home of God is among mortals. He will dwell with them. They will be his peoples and God himself will be with them. He will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Death will be no more. Mourning and crying and pain will be no more. These beautiful words from Revelation are a great reminder for us that God is with us, that God has chosen North, East, Elkton, Cecil County, Maryland to dwell. God has chosen Earth to be among his peoples, to be among us. Friends, we belong to God, and no time, no space, or no sin can separate us from God. And if that isn't good enough, God keeps piling on good news. Every tear will be wiped from their eyes, death, mourning, crying, pain, no more. God is telling us this, shouting it from God's throne. So we remember. When life gets in the way, when everything is going great, or when nothing seems to be going right, I'll be right there, reminding you that you are loved and that you are enough. I'll be reminding you of what God has done in your life, is doing, and will do. I will never give up on telling you that God has made a home on earth with us to show how serious God is about being for us. I will tell you to remember, to remember the people who have formed you and loved you, 
the ones who have died, and also the ones who sit in front, behind, and next to you right now. I will weep with you and remember with you the promise of resurrection and in the ugly cries and the happy tears. We will remember together that death has power no more, that Christ is alive. Friends, that's good news to remember for a lifetime. Alleluia. Amen. I invite you to actually open up your hymnals to hymn number 428. We're going to just speak this psalm responsively. You can stay seated if you wish. I'll do the odd verses, and then together we'll say the even verses, okay? Give thanks for those whose faith is firm when all around seems bleak on god's good promise they rely so while they live and when they die how forcefully they speak the strong who once were weak give thanks for those whose hope is clear beyond mere mortal sight who seek the city god has planned the true eternal promised land and steer on toward that light, a beacon ever bright. Give thanks for those whose love is pure, a sparkling precious stone. They show by what they say and do an inward beauty, warm and true. For God's concerns they own, God's love through them is known. Give thanks for saints of ages past and saints alive today, though often by this world despised, their hearts by God are richly prized. Give thanks that we may say we share their pilgrim way. Friends, I invite you to stand. Let us confess the faith of the church with the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Eternal God, you hold firm among the changes of this world. Hear us now as we pray for the church, the world, and everyone in need. Let us respond to each petition with Your mercy is great. Merciful God, we give thanks for all missionaries who have brought your message of hope to new communities and wiped tears away. Continue to raise up courageous missionaries to share your gospel of hope. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. Creating God, we praise you for abundant harvests and the goodness of creation. Create communities of care for your earth so that all land, water, and soil 
will be celebrated and cherished by future generations of saints. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of peace, we give you thanks for nations of peace that serve as a refuge for all whose homelands are afflicted with violence. Strengthen those who continue to work for peace and support all veterans who carry the scars of war. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of healing, we give you thanks for health care workers who labor around the clock to answer cries for help. Bring wholeness to all who struggle with post-traumatic stress disorder, anxiety, depression, addiction, and all who long for healing in any way. We especially pray for Rosemary Cameron, Mark, Patty Ryan, Yvonne Lorenz, Drew, Virginia and Robert McKnight, Debbie Ross, Kaya and family, Danielle Lewandowski, Michelle Logan, Beverly Cox, Andrea Dickey, Lynn McGee, Joyce Owens, Karen Allen, Debbie Vicente, Dave Ferretti, Barbara Ewing, all those affected by gun violence and COVID-19. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of justice, we praise you for the feeding ministries and for all meals that bring people together for nourishment and fellowship. Bless chefs, bakers, servers, dishwashers, communion assistants, and meal ministry coordinators. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God of the ages. We give you thanks for the saints of this congregation who have inspired, challenged, loved, and taught us. We remember before you today our brother Jim, dear husband, father, grandfather, friend, child of God. We also give thanks for these saints who have entered the church triumphant this past year. Kathy Dooley, Della Parsons, Ralph Kumpf, George Schweitzer, Butchie Schaefer, Michael Boyer, Trisha Barrett, Wipe away our tears and lead us by their example until we feast together on your holy mountain. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. God, our protection and strength, we entrust to you all for whom we pray. Remain with us always. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Friends, the peace of Christ be with you always. You. Share a sign of peace with one another, and I invite you to be seated. I just want to take a moment to say thank you to all who made last week an amazing day. Uh, we had, I think, the highest attendance we've had in like a very long time, <laughs> 57 people. Uh, so it was a joyous day to be together, to be the saints gathered and the church gathered. And then to be able to come back a few hours later at 2 o'clock to do trunk or treat between, I keep calling them trunkers and treaters, uh, we had probably 80 people come through our parking lot to uh, eat, to get candy. Um, and this was a great way to remember why we are here to share love to those who don't feel love all that much, to those who literally are right down the road in the community that's there, that they are indeed a part of us, and that they know that we will show up for them because God continues to show up for us. 
So I invite you to think of great ways that we can still engage with the community. That this doesn't have to just be a one-time thing or we do this just once a year, but how can we be church together for this community? To share with them God's redeeming love. Let us pray. Holy God, the earth is yours and everything in it. Yet you have chosen to dwell among your creatures. Come among us now in these gifts of bread and wine. And strengthen us to be your body for the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Please stand as you are able. You think we can do the uh, communion liturgy a cappella together? Let's do it. The Lord be with you, and also with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is indeed right, our duty and our joy, that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, through our Savior Jesus Christ. By the witness of the saints, you show us the hope of our calling and strengthen us to run the race set before us, that we may delight in your mercy and rejoice with them in glory. And so, with Jim and all the saints, with the choirs of angels and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. Holy, holy, holy Lord, Lord God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread. He gave thanks. He broke it. And he gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup. He gave thanks. And he gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Lord, remember us in your kingdom and daily teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Friends, a feast of love is offered here for you and for all the saints. The table 
has been prepared by our Lord. Come, taste and see that the Lord is good. Amen. You may be seated.
Friends, the body and blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. Let us pray. Blessed Jesus, at this table you have been for us both host and meal. Now send us forth to extend our tables and to share your gifts until that day when all feast together at your heavenly banquet. Amen. A few quick announcements as we will have our midweek Bible study this Wednesday at 6.30. We'll be studying Acts 6. We'll have men's Bible study at 9 a.m. on Thursday. Put Advent soup suppers on your calendar, the Wednesdays in Advent. So it's the 1st, the 8th, the 15th, and the 22nd. We'll have soup from 6 to 6.30, and then we'll have some devotional time from 6.30 to 7, 7.15. We will also be offering this as a hybrid option. So if you want to join via Zoom, we will have the camera up and if we have a few folks on Zoom together, then you guys can have conversation. We're just going to see if this will get more people together uh, for this Advent time. Um, so be on the lookout for all that information. Um, if you would still like to sign up for soup or bread, there are still a few slots available on the sign-up sheet behind Steve Christensen in the back. Also on the back table, you will see a poinsettia sign-up form already for Christmas Eve. Um, the deadline is December 6th. Uh, just with supply and everything, we just have to get our order in uh, sooner rather than later. Um, so they're $12. Uh, you can pick red or white. The sign-up sheet is in the back, and we'll make sure we get the right number ordered. So please do that. And if you have a check or cash, just make sure you designate it as poinsettia uh, uh, poinsettia order. Again, I just want to thank you all for a great, uh, for a great weekend last week, not only with the ordination and then everything we did here on Sunday. It was just God-filled, and I hope that you all were able to feel a little bit of heaven, because uh, I know I did, and I'm so thankful for all of you and joining uh, in prayer and in, in person uh, for those festivities. Are there any other announcements for the good of the order? Yes, Steve. Just a safety message. If, if you don't know, the uh, whitetail rut started in a flurry last week. And if you've been driving them around much, you might have seen a uh, buck standing on the side of the road with strange looks in their eyes. And, and does are running scared everywhere. So if you're driving out there, be careful. Keep, keep an eye out to the left and right when you're near any woods. There's your... Dear safety message from Steve Berg, <laughs> for which we are thankful. Thank you. Any other announcements for the good of the order? Oh, happy birthday to Pat. Yeah, I think we need to say happy birthday to Pat and to Diane. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Pat and Diane. Happy birthday to you. Very good. See, we can do well with acapella. We're good. <laughs> Any other announcements for the good of the order? Friends, I invite you to stand for the benediction. The God of steadfastness and encouragement grant you to live in harmony with one another in accordance with Christ Jesus. The God of hope fill you with all joy and peace and believing so that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. And the God of all grace, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, bless you now and forever. Amen. Do we want to test the closing hymn? It's one that we all know. Okay. Bum, ba, da, dum. No, okay, you've got to keep it moving, right? <laughs> we're gonna, we'll, we'll try, we'll try our best. It's gonna be it, it, it's, gonna, it's just gonna be. We're gonna be good. Alrighty, just follow my lead. Oh, when the saints go marching in, oh, when the saints go marching in, 
Oh Lord, I want to be in that number when the saints go marching in. Oh, when the Lord in glory comes, oh, when the Lord in glory comes, oh, Lord, I want to be in that number when the Lord in glory comes. Oh, when the new world is revealed, oh, when the new world is revealed, Oh, Lord, I want to be in that number when the new world is revealed. Oh, when they gather round the throne, oh, when they gather round the throne, oh, Lord, I want to be in that number when they gather round the throne. And on that hallelujah day, and on that hallelujah day, O oh Lord, I want to be in that number on that hallelujah day. Friends, led on by the saints before us, let us go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.